Hello again, this is Bobby here at Coppel TV Repair today with a video telling you sort of how to repair, giving you the clues how to repair a 32 inch high end, reasonably old 32 inch Panasonic 1080p, probably one of the first 1080p 32 inch TVs. Uh, this was a, an S class TV at its time, uh, model being TC 32LZ800. Uh, this is the second time we see the same problem on this TV, and if we've seen two, I'm sure there will be more out there that are experiencing the same. The problem is the TV, when powered on, clicks in, uh, then turns itself off as it normally does, but when you try to power it on, it clicks. The red light, the red LED on the front turns on for a short while, but then it turns itself off. It never uh, stays on and it never comes to the backlight. So what we ended up doing was first check whether we have the PFC circuit working fine uh, as it is mounted like that. What you can see here is the power supply board, uh, offset the inverter on the side, which gets power from the PFC. PFC is a little circuit that uh, does two things. It uh, its main purpose is to make sure that uh, <clears throat> power is being consumed um, in a way that does not affect uh, the total power grid consumption where uh, too much inductive or capacitive load is being loaded on the load. It, it's a long story short, it does two things. It uh, does take care of certain regulations uh, that were uh, accepted in the industry many years ago and number two it raises the voltage from the rectified standard input AC uh, 160 up to uh, 400 volts and you can tell that PFC circuit is employed by this device by seeing that the large uh, mains capacitor is 450 volts rated some power supplies do not have PFC circuits and they have capacitors that usually go up to 200 volts or 250. Uh, so the first thing that we did was uh, measure here to see that the PFC circuit is fine. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the TV now. And this is already fixed, but in the one that wasn't fixed, we could see that the PFC was going all the way up to 380. And for the five seconds during which the TV was on, it was stably staying at that voltage. Now, then the second thing that we will check and I advise you to check is uh, measuring ground. We're measuring a DC voltage. Measuring ground uh, to, I think, the bottom of those three wires. That's right. You got to have 4.71 or anything about 4.7 at this staying stably for the short time during which the TV is on and you should also have and this is the, the teller should have 90 29.5 volts here on uh, this jumper if that shows only momentarily or if it doesn't go all the way up uh, you most likely are having the problem that we found out being present uh, it is the driver for this transformer uh, that produces the power for the main board once the, TV, uh, the, once the TV is turned on. It's on the back side of the power board. We're not going to show it now. We offer a repair kit that contains it. And in one of the two TV, once we replace that and put the power supply board back in place, uh, TV came up, backlight showed up. But on this particular unit here, there was nothing on the screen. It was totally dark. And we investigated some more and we found the fuse on the TCOM board to have been blown. Uh, and this is a quick hack. We will have the proper fuses in the repair kit that we will offer. Uh, this is somewhat unusual and I don't know what actually made that fuse to blow uh, because there was nothing else on that TCOM that was bad. But once we replace the fuse with a, with a hacked up one like this, TV is now working fine. And... Uh, it's a very good TV. I'm sure people who have been using it are, are fond of it. Uh, don't throw it at the landline if you can fix it at the expense of $15, $20 and uh, 20 minutes of your time. That is all there is to know, but you can go and find the repair kit at our website. And uh, happy hacking. Thank you.